So in case you haven't noticed, fall is definitely here in the eastern part of the U.S. We got some great color change this year, and it's been an extremely busy week for me. We downsize a bit. I'm getting rid of a piece of equipment to a friend of mine's son who is just starting out in machine work. He's 17 years old, works at a machine shop part-time after school, and uh, wants a piece of equipment that I have more than actually I do. So I decided to sell a piece of equipment. I'll show you which piece of equipment that is and show you some of the loading footage this week. We're also going to be doing a little work on the old Chevy pickup truck. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoy. Good morning. So the machine that I decided to part with is the little Adcock Shipley Horizontal Mill. Now, I never planned on selling this thing and was extremely excited when, I, when it first showed up at the shop. But when Scott brought the axles to me for my pickup truck, he brought his son Gentry along with him, who was all smiles when he seen this little machine in person. He had watched some of the videos that I'd done on it in the past where we just went over it and checked its condition, and he'd been looking for one of these for a very long time. And Gentry's a pretty reserved young man. He doesn't show a lot of emotion on his face, but with this little machine, he was all smiles, and it took him probably an hour to ask if it was even possible for him to, to buy it from me. So I'm glad I decided to part with it. You know, he'll get more use out of this thing, chances are, than I ever would. And being a young guy, getting into machining, it's it's tough to find equipment that's, you know, manageable size. So I'm glad that you know, it's going to a good home. So if you've watched my channel in the past, there's a good chance you've seen me move some pretty heavy stuff. And unlike the Egyptians, I did not use and do not use alien technology to move my stuff. I simply drag them up on the trailer any which way possible, trying to cover the bases when it comes to anything that can happen and does happen bad like tipping over. Try to brace them up as good as possible and keep that from happening. Slow and steady is the name of the game when it comes to moving awkward heavy stuff. Now we need some sort of something here. Maybe once we get up here we can, uh, we can wedge under the pallet get it going. I don't think this will be too bad. We need to uh, make sure that that stays where it's at. So there is a big part of me that hates to see this little machine go, because they're really not that easy to find, especially in this condition that this one's in. But there is also a big part of me that is glad to have the front of my shop open to where I can pull something in there if I want to. And plus, you know, I know it's going to a good home, somebody who will look after it and, you know, potentially get some use from it.
All right, guys, welcome to the shop. It is a brisk 28.5 degrees Fahrenheit outside, the coldest morning that we've had here all year to this point. It is 47 degrees Fahrenheit in the shop, so not horrible in here. But what I'm gonna be doing today is bringing the Chevy pickup truck in the shop. We're gonna go around it, see what all we're gonna have to do in order to get it up in the condition that I would like it to be in You know, when we're done with it. We'll get started on that, because we gotta do what we can do when we can do it because I'm waiting on parts for the axles to arrive. So let's get a fire in here first and then get the truck in the shop, if it will start, that is. This thing is so nice. Well, it's not looking good for an ice scraper in the truck. outside there was some concern in the comment section that it would struggle a lot starting during cold weather I'm curious to myself to see how it does so high 20s so not crazy cold but let's see if this thing will start easy in the cold weather so is she gonna struggle So now that the truck is pulled in the shop, all of the frost has melted off this thing, I can show you what kind of condition that it's really in because I don't think that I've ever showed it in detail. It's not good, but in the world of Rusty, it's really not all that bad. If you watch my buddy uh, Wes Johnson from Watch Wes Work or South Main Auto, those guys live in the rust belt and work on vehicles daily, you'll know that they can get pretty bad. And uh, I've rode in these where they're so bad that you actually get wet from, uh, from the water from the road splashing up on your paint, pant legs from the rotted out floorboards. This one's got some rot, but it's not that bad. So you'll see. So I've got the GoPro here and as quickly as I can, we'll walk around this thing and I'll show you the rusty highlights. This thing is starting to get pretty bad, but it is repairable. So we've got a rusty inner fender wheel, which is common with all of them about this age. So we will be replacing inner fender wheels on both sides because they're cheap and uh, you know readily available along with all the patch panels on this truck nothing on this thing as far as sheet metal is all that expensive but the problem is that by the time you buy an aftermarket fender 
and it gets beat all to pieces in shipping by the time it gets to your place, and then you struggle to fit it because it doesn't fit all that great, sometimes you're better off to fix what you have. So we'll make that decision as we move forward. But you can see pretty rotted around the trim there and down in the bottom you know, where they always did. The doors on this thing really need replaced. I don't, I don't feel like fixing these doors because they are so bad. And, uh, you know, sometimes you're just better off to find a set of doors or, uh, or replace them. Rot it out around where you pull on them there. And then once they start getting weak, you know, and you patch that, it's just not a great place to patch because it breaks out. Been there, done that. I've seen these doors rotted halfway off. So really, these are excellent. <laughs> Rocker, inner and outer on the driver's side, not good completely needs chopped out and replaced. Luckily, those are readily available. Cab corner, same deal. And it to be cut out. Rust is always worse than it looks. Once you start cutting into it, you find just how far it goes. And uh, sometimes you're quite surprised at how bad it is. Bedside on the driver's side, you know, I've seen them a lot worse than this. But I think we are going to repair the bedsides on this truck because they're not really bad enough to be uh, worrying about replacing them. This, just mostly surface rust, pretty rotted out above the fender wheel here where they always did. This was like this when I got it, so it's really, you know, they make a patch panel for that, so we will replace that as well. Back in the back of the fender wheel, rotted out, pretty common. We got the patch panel for that. So the bed floor in this truck is not in good shape. It's rusted and thin and all that good stuff, but the thing is that they're a pain to replace they're pretty expensive and this can be fixed and if i put a bed in this truck it'll just get beat up anyway so the idea is to replace the hole or repair the holes that are in this because there are a few rust holes where it bolts to the frame but other than that you know it is still a bed floor so we'll probably clean it out real good patch the holes give it a good bed liner and then bob's your grandma back bumper needs replaced rotted out where it hooks to the brackets so you wouldn't want to hook anything to this uh this back bumper not anything substantial anyway you'd end up uh you know with a trailer with a bumper hooked to it quite a bit of bondo there this truck has been hit in the rear at one time and somebody's repaired that unless that is factory but that's quarter inch bondo in that back bed corner so, tailgate not in great shape. I'd love to find one, but if I can't, we'll just use the we'll use what we got. Although it is hanging off at the moment because there's so much junk and ice in between the gap there that I can't get it closed. Back bedside on the driver's side needs replaced, so we'll put that patch panel in and we'll fix the rust that's starting uh, in this upper wheel well. But other than that, this bedside's not in that bad of shape. It's not all dented and beat all to pieces so definitely repairable on this side so passenger door although it doesn't look horrible it's not in good shape it's got a big dent up there from my daughter's pony years ago rotten out at uh, at the handle there and then the infamous rocker panel pretty bad shape so we'll cut into it see how bad it is if we have to replace it we will but, uh, you know, it's not looking promising. Cab corner, same way. It has been fixed before. So, probably held together by Bondo. Driver si or passenger side front fender is not in that bad of shape and will get repaired. So, I got one rust hole starting in it right there. You know, I'm sure we'll find more as we dig in. But you get the idea. Inner fender wheel rotted out, same as the driver's side. So, not quite as bad, but it is starting hood we'll keep that as is all right clean it up paint it it's not beat all the pieces and we're rotted and then we'll give her a beauty makeover on the front maybe clean up paint replace a few things and potentially build a front bumper for this thing with a winch that's what i would like so we'll see that is the general overview so let's pick somewhere and get started so i'm going to start out by rebuilding the door hinges on this driver door they are really worn out and this driver door's dropped down over an inch back here now the reason i'm going to start out with the hinges on this thing is because i want a good stable platform to hang my door from that way everything's in line body line line body line wise 
when I go to do the cab corners and the rockers. I want it to all fit together the way that it should and not base my cab corners and rockers off of a door that's not hung properly. I believe I hit the change jackpot. So there's the upper door hinge, and you can see there's a bushing right there, a piece of one. Maybe you can see that, maybe you can't. But anyway, it just wore completely out. Stink bug hiding in there. Called stink bugs. And the reason they get that name is because they stink. And during winter, they get up in places and hide. And uh, you find them behind your curtains in your house. Come on, focus. The old stink bug. So all I'm doing here is taking a scribe and scribing around the outline of the door hinge that way when scratching it into the paint of the actual door and that way when I put the door back on I can put it right back where it was and it should be really close. It's been a time saver for me in the past to do that anyway. So if all you're doing is changing the door pins and bushings, none of this stuff has to come off that you've seen me. No pulling the wire and harness, no pulling the door panel, none of that. We used to do a bunch of them and we would just set a jack underneath the door. We'd pull the two pins, pull the door out just a little bit while somebody stabilized it. And then we would swap out the bushings, put new pins in it, you know, slide it back together, put the pins in and you're done. Uh, so I'm removing this door because it needs a lot of work and I just want it out of the way for now. So that's why I went through all this in case you're wondering. So there's a look at both hinges. That was our problem. Just wore out. The bushings are wore out of them. And a little movement here equals a lot of movement on the other end of the door, as you can imagine. So this little ratchet and bit set was sent to me by a viewer. It came off my Amazon wish list, and I really appreciate it. I call these a wheel well ratchet. We always used them. Uh, doing, doing body work when the wheel was really close to the fender well and you were taking out the inner fender well There's a bunch of screws there. And you couldn't get a, even a stubby screwdriver in there And that's where these come in extremely handy You could get a short screwdriver in here, but still The leverage that these things give you 
really nice. Light bezel is broken. I need to get uh, a couple of these. So check out Bubba. He just got him a haircut. Looking mighty distinguished. I just got a haircut as well. So check out Bubba. Yeah, come on, go play. Come on, why are you struggling so much with this? So at some point, somebody has attempted a weld here. Looks like they just burned through uh, more than they did anything. But I think they were trying to maybe stop a crack. It is cracked there. It looks like they were maybe trying to get ahead of it. Who knows? But you can see where I scratched with a uh, scribe there. And that's where our uh, hinge will line back up. Just makes it easy because these are adjustable. And you just put it right back where it was. And that should be pretty close to where it should be. going to put a little bit of the croil on these bolts. Not really because I think that it will help, but it does make me feel better. So that is a, that's actually part of it, or a large portion of it. Let's see if these will come off. Get the right ratchet the right way, you dingus. Um, let's see if these will come out without breaking. Wow, that's just a little clip. I thought that was an actual bolt. And they did come off. Well, the bolt didn't come out, but I think all the metal around it did.
to get a little tight. And once they get tight, I don't want to break it off, so put a little more juice on there and then maybe go back the other way a little bit. Here's a set of our replacement door hinges. These are made by Dorman. Not a huge fan of Dorman stuff, but they're fine for this kind of thing. So we got two pins. These are hardened pins. And then four factory bushings. So if your hinges aren't worn at all, you can just pop these right back in. If they're just a little loose and you're good to go. But if they are worn, you do not want to put these thin bushings into an oblong hole because they'll just break and they won't last long. So what I do, bore out the... Uh, war door hinge and then press in these thicker bushings in the larger hole and then you know it tightens them right up and they should last quite a long time you know, that's what we're going to do bore out our holes in our bushings from our first have a snack because this was brought to me by scott and uh and his kids some halloween candy that's good Good stuff. So I'm about ready to drill out this upper hinge for the larger bushings. 3160 fourths is the drill that we're going to be using. We're just going to be doing it by hand. Be plenty good enough. Once we go through the first one and start going through the second, they'll self-align and uh, it'll work just fine. You do have to be careful and try to keep it as straight up and down as possible, but I always just go slow and uh, you know try to do my best to keep it straight. the top and the bottom because they get pressed in one from the top and one from the bottom there. This is just so the bushing slides in easy. Now to press our bushings in, just going to use a C-clamp and a socket because the bushing is a little wider than the actual uh, hinge itself. It's just a good strong C-clamp. Try to get it started as straight as possible. and be bushing a little just till it gets started. It wants to go in straight. And once we get that, push it in the rest of the way. The socket. fall out and it's in there good and solid.
then you just drive them in and seat them. There is a knurl on the upper part of the pin, but I'm not going to drive these in and seat them until I'm for sure that I'm not going to have to take these back off. But that's pretty much it to the door pins. So do you remember in the beginning of this video when I said that rust is always worse than you think? Well, here's a good example of what worse than you think looks like because I'll be honest, I did not think that it was going to be this worst. And it is. So, what do we do to go forward? Let me show you this and then I'll tell you what my plans are at the moment. You can see there is a lack of metal here. There is a lack of metal here. There is a lack of metal here and a large lack of metal here and it's starting to lack metal here right the whole thing basically now what i could do and what i have done in the past is make a patch panel for this clean up that seam and weld it in and spend two days doing it or i could throw this in the back of the truck of the guy who comes every other week to pick up my metal recycling and have him take this to the scrap yard and buy a fender for $150 and spend a day fixing all the dents in it when it comes in and wallowing out the holes so it fits my truck. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what I think that I'm going to do is the latter and skip all this because the problem is once you fix this, fix it, it always comes back. You never stop it. Unless you cut it all out, it never ever stops. So that's the, that's the grim outlook of this fender. Not, uh, not healthy. As you can see, there's even holes up here that are not supposed to be there. So she's pretty bad, pretty bad. Now we got our door off, we got our hinges rebuilt, we got the driver's fender and inner fender well out, and I've done a pretty thorough inspection of this thing, both from the outside obviously and from, from the underneath. And uh, it's really not all that bad. I've seen these things so rotted that this lower hinge is just flopping in the breeze and there's just not nothing to work with. Luckily that's really not the case with this one. Our cab support's good. I've replaced many of those in the past. And I think we're going to get away with just the outer rocker. We'll see once we get it cut away just what kind of shape the metal behind that's in. And you know, if we have to put a patch panel in there, we will. But here is the rocker that we will be <laughs> replacing this nonsense with. And uh, if you're going to buy patch panels, just go ahead and get the good ones because they're only a few dollars higher than the cheap ones and the heavy gauge material is a lot easier to work with, especially if you're not a great welder. Um, the cheap ones, they're not, they're not any easier. In fact, they're harder and you don't really save anything because they just rust out faster than the thick ones. So there is our patch panel for the rocker, outer, and our cab corner for this side. So they give you a quite a bit of extra metal there. Well, it depends on your truck, actually. Sometimes these rot it off pretty high, but as you can see, looks like it's gonna fit pretty good. And what we'll probably do is tie in right below this molding because that's a pretty good place to transition from our new part to our old part, kind of good place to hide it, right? So there you go. Not as bad as what I thought it would be. Um, but we haven't got the carpet out of this thing yet, and it could be rusted from the top. The floor looks good underneath, but sometimes, well, this one's no different than all the rest. It leaks, and a lot of times the carpet would hold water because they leak through the windshield or through the door seal, and the floors would rot from the top down, which is a little counterintuitive, but it did happen. So we'll see once we get that deep into it. But So far, I'm... <laughs> Uh, pleasantly surprised it's not worse than what it uh, could be. So they actually make a panel that pops over this and kind of hides the rusty, crusty look. And I know that's pretty tempting, but don't you dare do that. That's cheating. Underneath of that, you still got a rusty truck and you're lying to people. So do it right. Cut them out. Put new ones in. You don't want to be a cheater. Okay, so that looks like about as far as we're going to get this week, unfortunately. My plans were to have these cut out and at least starting to cut the patch panels and fitting them back together, but it was just impossible with what little time I had available this week.
did get her hinges done, got her stripped down. I did a good inspection on it, which makes me feel a lot better. I really went up under this truck and picked around and looked, and I didn't see anything that wasn't undoable or you know, was a no-go for this truck. So that's promising. Makes me feel a lot better. So hopefully when I'm done with this truck, it'll be a dependable, strong running, good off-road, um, decent looking work truck. So that's all I want it to be. So that's it, I think. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever. Trust me, I appreciate it more than you know. And that's it. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower. to break through